Hello everybody, it's Lemmy and Finisher, and today we're going to be talking about divination, mysticism, mystical powers. Now, I had to review a few notes uh, to make sure I got this straight. First of all, let's talk about um, the different types of mystical powers, which includes channeling, spellworking, and the ability to do make spells and incantations at work. Um, this includes channeling as well as divination. So yes, divination is a form of mystical power. Mystics um, can do these things. In addition to mystics, also have another way of looking at the world outside of them. According to another website I have here, First of all, what is a mystic? According to one website from Yoga Kingdom Sanctuary says, Mysticism is neither faith nor the way, so is the principle of a dogma. A mystic being born, mystic, being a mystic means being a certain temperament, a certain outlook on life is for the reason that many are confused by the word mystic because mysticism cannot be explained in way words. <coughs> Excuse me. To a mystic, impulse has divine significance in every impulse a mystic sees the divine direction when people call free will as something that does not exist for a mystic he or she sees one plan working and making its way towards a de desired result and every person whether willingly or unwilling contributes towards the accomplishment of that plan and this contribution to the plan is considered by one to be free well, and another accident. All right, that's just a piece of it. Let's put that in plain English. Let's start by talking about some basic mystics. Um, mystics, there's lots of examples of them. Um, first of all, they usually focus on contemplation. They usually think about things. Sometimes they think beyond the obvious to the inobvious. For example, if you will think about in The Wizard of Oz, just... The, the TV, uh, the, the movie, not not the book by Frank Baum, but also the book does count too. What is the wizard doing? The wizard is quietly behind the curtain and making his persona work. Okay? A mystic, upon approaching the throne of the great fire and stuff, would realize that that is not where the, the, the wizard is. It's not in the throne of all the fire and yelling and stuff like that, but rather he's clearly manipulating energies such as mystical powers to make himself look powerful. Of course, we know that in the case of the Wizard of Oz, the wizard himself was just a showman who was just using his showmanship to make things look bigger than they are in real life. A real mystic, uh, for example, St. Catherine Siena, St. Francis of Assisi, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Augustine, um, yes, even his mother there, St. Monica, was in a way her own mystic because she truly believed and wanted to see her son receive the baptism of the Catholic Church. St. Augustine, because of his divine faith and study of the faith, became the arch or the Bishop of Hippo, and, um, and he clearly demonstrate a deep, profound knowledge of the, um, the mysticism. Um, if you ever read his um, Confessions, um, or I'm sorry, The City of God, uh, you would see this, that his divine writings are very, very deep and profound based on his own personal experience. In some of the stories, he explains of his own journey um, from being just a typical schoolboy um, and up to his his coronation as a bishop, he um, clearly Saint Saint Augustine was definitely a mystic in his own right. Saint Catherine of Siena certainly was as well. She was actually very very devout. She truly she wanted to be a contemplative nun, and so she turned her home into a cloister, where she dedicated her life to serving God. Um, in her case, Father God, um, Michelle works with both, but mostly prefers to work with Mother God. Um, this, of course, is 
what a mystic is truly does is they focus their whole life to look behind the veils, to contemplate what is going on around them, and to understand the deep truth that deeply happened and what's the real story. Okay? Um, in the case of mystical powers, of course, this includes, in some people, spell working. Um, they, find the, they find true importance in things such as casting spells, divination, incantations, uh, studying of the of sacred spells, sacred rites, uh, study faith structures, rules, dogmas, policies, teachings. Um, and that's what Michelle does. Okay, she's she's truly deeply focuses on the great beyond the veil, if you will. In other words, she knows about the wizard behind the curtain. She knows that that wizard is making all this work, but she doesn't question that. And she's like, well, I'd like to know is what I'm supposed to feel standing in front of this curtain of all these fire and booming voices and all this. And so that's exactly what um, Michelle feels deep down in her heart is the same thing is I want to know more about what I'm feeling and what I'm seeing. Um, there's so many examples of mysticism and especially... Uh, Michelle likes to study the teachings of the Dalai Lama. Believe it or not, she she actually has him on her Google Plus account. She reads a lot of his writings uh, from his Buddhism um, and and studies, you know, to understand deep down how it all works and how the great mystery of all life is interconnected. Um, so when Michelle studies, for example, um, things like and Ouija board and stuff, she doesn't just see it as a physical board with a, uh, a planchette thing or a cursor, as she calls it. Um, she sees it as deeper what it is, as a way to communicate with the divine spirits. And unfortunately, uh, as many cases, people have found out they're not so divine spirits. But that's exactly what Michelle likes to do. She studies that. That's what she likes to do. She likes to learn about... Um, divine spirits myself i also am also into divinity however i'm maybe i'm a little bit too deep for most people but you know that's because i've been a spirit guide with michelle and michelle's been my spirit guide we've been together for a long time since the beginning of time because we are twin souls and that's sometimes is where get things get scary um first of all let's explain one thing about um the modern mystic the modern mystic may or may not be a cloister. They may not necessarily be spend all their lives in the hermitage. If you consider this apartment hermitage, it certainly is uh, where Michelle spends most of her time contemplating, thinking about all the great divine mysteries, all the things around her. But yet at the same time, she also has to deal with every day by day world things too. For example, making sure the cats are fed and you know, making sure that the needs are met, that she needs such as food and and water and shelter and clothing. But if you look at it this way, Michelle is indeed very much like your typical hermit. Um, she's She truly believes that Mother God is indeed a divine being that she chooses to study and loves deeply, as do I. Um, I was gonna ask Michelle, I, I, me and Michelle were thinking um, before I came on camera, is should we do this together or should we do it separately, this discussion? And personally, I feel more and more that we are better as a group discussing this than as individuals, only because Michelle has a way of bringing the abstract into a little more uh, and a little lofty into more of the everyday realms. Michelle, would you mind coming on the camera? No, I don't mind. Okay. Um, first of all, let's talk about mysticism um, and how you approach it. Um, because mysticism, mysticism is such a deep thing, it's really kind of, uh, um, it's, it's a path. It's a way for me, I mean, for example, let's take another example of, an, of a mystic type person, um, that because of reasons of his Luke Garrick's disease is a mystic because he basically has no choice. We're talking about, of course, Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking is, um... He's got the cheer of um, Isaac Newton at Cambridge. He's a 
he's a very intelligent theoretical physicist. He studies hard. He looks at all the way the universe is put together and all the pieces. Mm -hmm. um, he also sees the, um, and he asks himself, given all that he sees around him, as how is this divine mystery of how physics works? Now, um, I think, I mean, um, Stephen Hawking, of course, has nothing against God. In fact, he actually wonders if, indeed, if there is maybe a divine creator behind the system. But he tries to look at it and understand it through his eyes, um, through applied physics uh, and theoretical physics. You got to remember, he can't really move much. No. So every time he's, he's sitting there in his power chair and he's he's thinking about how all this stuff goes together. A very intelligent guy. Very intelligent guy. One of the things also about mystics is um, uh, the Beatles saying um, the fool on the hill. Okay. Now, when you study the fool on the hill, what is it? But they said he sees the world spinning around. You know, he sees the sun going down. He sees everything that goes on. Nobody likes him because he brings out or he shows them the truth that is uh, not clearly obvious to the everyday person. Okay, so the mystic is a person that says, you only seen part of the story. Here's the half that you're not seeing. Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, so can a mystic also be very arrogant? Um, they can be. Um, I do my best not to be an arrogant bitch uh, because I don't really think it's really what mother wants me to be. Um, one of the things is about being the North American Snow Queen is during the other nine months of the year when I'm not thinking about weather, I have time to think about the great questions of life, liberty, I mean, life, universe, and everything, basically. I, I have a chance to ask myself, is, what's it like when we die? What's it like when we're born? Um, what's it like um, being part of the dark entities? What's it like to, um, to feel like Father and Mother God? You know, what's it like to feel emotional pain? Why do we feel emotional pain? Heavy stuff. Very heavy. Okay, so, you, you, of course, you also have your own cross, you so speak, as Catholics would say, which is you got multiple handicaps. You have legal blindness. You have a cataract in your right eye. You have arthritis. You have a weight problem. You have, um, you know, because you're a mystic, you're not very well liked, just like the fall in the hill. Yeah. Um... But could you tell us something about what, how a how a Ouija board really works? A Ouija board is a divination tool. Um, in the right hands, it can be used to tap into resources of the Akasha records and things that Mother and Father God, because of you know concerns for the well-being of human beings may not feel or is appropriate information to have at this time. Um, if you are just trying to find out about your loved ones that died, that's okay. Okay, no one's going to argue and saying it's okay. If I said, if I asked a Ouija board, I did ask me a Ouija board, and I found out my father indeed is at, you know, is on the other side. I did not ask him. All right, I, I, I didn't have any way of actually getting it to work because of all the, um, confusion that was going on is, you know, was, you know, how do you feel about my performance? Um, but I have a feeling that my father deep down is, is, you know, because he is happy. He's, he's with others that, you know, respect his abilities and his knowledge. My dad was a smart man. I mean, when he died, he was no dummy. He had all his marbles. Um, he was intelligent and, uh, very gifted in his own right. Um, I don't have a lot of my father's abilities, but I do got a lot of my father's intellect. So because like, you know, like uh, Stephen Hawking, um, with my limitation, my eyesight, my hearing and things like that, I just kind of became more of a contemplative person to think about how it all works. Okay, so why, why would the devil or the negative entities, not so much the devil, why would so much the negative entities want to find a way to use our, uh, our, our curiosity to cause us great harm? 
Uh, well, first of all, um, human beings since Homo habilis um, had always began to have a deep down in the wondering is what happens to the body after we cease to function. Um, the Homo habilis at many burial sites was placing fra um, fruits and flowers for the deceased. Um, anthropologists believe this because Homo habilis believed that there indeed was a life after death. Um, of course, that carried on to the Egyptians and to many other cultures as well, is that there is indeed a life after death in their eyes of um, Egyptians. Even Edgar Cayce had said the same thing, is that there is a life after death. Is how our futures and our past are written in the Akasha records. When we talk about the Akasha records. Would you explain how, where are these scrolls stored? These scrolls are stored in a great library on the other side, um, Mother Asna had mentioned, I mean, uh, not so much Mother Asna, but Sylvia Brown mentions the Hall of Knowledge. Um, and also, though, the orientation, which is also has some of the technology of the Hall of Knowledge, where we can, information is stored on our lives, past lives, but in our, in our current life chart and, and everything. But there's a rule that says that a spirit guide, which now ours is Mother Asna, but you were mine originally. Yes. You couldn't access anything in the future because Mother Oz and Father Yahweh only would release information as needed because they don't want to see us screw up our life chart by trying to, um, knowing what's coming and trying to cheat, if you will. Exactly. Um, so the devil... Um, I hate that term, really, I do. I hate the term double because it means deceiver. It says, this is Satan. I think that we need to make sure we have to pick up, you know, use his name properly only because he is indeed one of the key figures of the uh, of the dark side. Um, Mother Azna and Father Yahweh's uh, um, competition, if you will. Um, Lucifer and his group of people believe that human beings should have access to all knowledge of God. That's what they, that's what got him into trouble and why a third of the heavenly host was cast out was because he believed that we were, that we were kind of spoon feeding knowledge to human beings and, um, and holding them back. Um, and so Lucifer kind of said, no, I don't like this idea. So I'm going to give everybody all the information they need now so they can do whatever they want right now. I want everybody to have free will and they're going to have free will period. Um, that's the reason why we get into a lot of trouble. We already see what's going on now. In fact, um, the, the, the Luciferians, of course, work with the Illuminati and the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki, of course, are, um, would also be where Mother Austin seems in. Y yes, but again, this is where the Anunnaki, unfortunately, have been getting a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Um, there is, um, there was no doubt that the Anunnaki, which are talked about in Sumerian texts, were not evil, dark spirits. They were people that really, truly believed in um, giving mankind the tools to to progress and go far. And, uh, but they also wanted to make sure that mankind um, was, you know, not going too far too fast. Um, it's true that in some cases there was... So many mixed understandings the Anunnaki. I don't think the true Anunnaki really give a damn about gold as much. Uh, I think some of that is um, more where the Luciferians type came in because they were interested in gold. So even if you study the, 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 the divine Vedas India, you hear of the two war, great war in heaven, which shows just like the war between God and and this and Lucifer and his group, um, where one side says no 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 no, uh, we are only going to give them humanity the information they need right now for what they need. We're not going to go ahead and just give them everything all at once because we don't know how mankind is going to do. We're afraid they're going to lose control of them, and of course Lucifer and his group says give them everything. You know, don't withhold anything back. Um, so. How does that tie with the divination? Well, because divination um, 
is to find out is to be like God, is to divine, is to become like divine. That's what it means to be divine. As uh, divination means to become divine. It means God-like. That means that you need to know knowledge about things that sometimes which God, Mother God and Father God have said, no, 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 this information is not for you right now. Maybe you as you need it. That's what Mother said. She says, Father God and I will give you the information you need when you need it. Because we are information that we feel that is not appropriate for at this time. Uh, and a Ouija board is just asking for trouble because where they won't provide the information, uh, Lucifer and his group will. And and that's the beginning of the problem. We see all this going on now with all the explosions of DNA and technology. We are becoming like gods. Yeah, but wasn't that supposed to be that way anyway after 2012? It was, but there is a lot more going on than that. Um, first of all, uh, Lucifer wants to mislead as many people as he can um, to give up on um, uh, Father Yahweh, Mother God. Mother Asna, which is also Mother Gaia, is provided for us with her loving, um, you know, s supplying us with the right amount of food, water, shelter, clothing. And the, um, the Luciferian forces are saying, no, no, no. No, well, well, that's that's not enough. We want more. So you think that their consistent argument between the middle of the wheels is what led to the the failure? Um, of what's going on in the thing? Um, yeah, I definitely think is that uh, the mankind, especially in a lot of the dogmatic churches, have really been misled. Um. Some churches are saying is, for example, is that you must die for God. You must, you know, you must make a perfect self-sacrifice to be earned a place in heaven. In fact, even in the Catholic, even in the Christian communities, you have the concept of that we are soldiers for Christ. We are so we are soldiers for God. We're soldiers for Yahweh. Um, well, Jesus at the time said, "I have." I have not come to make peace, but to make war. He wasn't talking so much about making trouble. Um, he didn't like the Romans either, but I think he was also understanding at that time is I have to respect that the Romans are here. I'm not able to fight them at this time. I'm not going to fight them at this time. Um, but she upset a lot of the people, the Hebrews, because they were like, oh, we thought you were going to come out there and get your army together and attack them, like Hamas and all that. Well, it doesn't happen that way. Um, but still, you know, you look at what has happened in the world, all the splintering of face, it's almost like, it's like taking a box of dominoes and just throwing them all over the place. There's no, the pieces of truth have been mixed up and some pieces have been lost and some pieces, you know, have been contaminated by miswritings and misquotings and misdestructions and all that. And it's not really what Mother God and Father God want. But for those people who choose to follow Lucifer and his minions, we know that their seek is to believe that they are God, and that's what they do. Okay. So now mystical powers, of course, is the tools that um, both sides use to make things happen. Casting spells, divination, channeling, um, tra astral travel, astral projection, all those, I use them. I don't use the divination as much, but I do use the other ones. I like to try. I love astral travel. It's fun. Uh, I've gotten really good at it. You and I have gone to Florence. We have gone to Vienna. We have gone to Venice. Yes, we have. We have... We have traveled to ancient Egypt. We have traveled to the future. We have traveled to the past. Um, we've traveled to other dimensions. We have been everywhere. We just about. But you haven't been doing it lately. Um, the reason why I haven't been doing it lately is two reasons. Number one is when I tra astral travel, um, it really opens up my crown chakra in a way that it's really, really explosive. The amount of information that travels to my, is my crown chakra opens up like a flower is intense energy. I mean, it just, all of a sudden you find your whole head is spiritually a fire. It's a flame. Okay. And what happens is it starts to burn off the hair in my head. Oh my God. 
So that was the reason why um, we kind of let back on the um, astral travel thing um, and the deep, deep divine mysticism um, because we didn't need to see our heads get burned up. I mean, yeah, my hair, is, it takes a long time. It's grown pretty fast now, but I got very fine hair. So unfortunately, having my hair burnt with crisp because of spiritual energy uh, and that intensity is just something that... Um, you know, also it's very exhausting energy spiritually wise. I mean, you, it's like it's like running the Boston Marathon, and if you if you if you're out of shape, and even if you are in shape, you know you still get exhausted by the time you hit the finish line. Um, so I mean, it's a work. It's a it's a tough trip, but I I love doing it. But having my hair burnt off my head isn't exactly cool. <laughs> No, it's not. I mean, your hair is growing very nicely now. Yeah, but even my hairdresser said that he found breakage in my head, that he wondered if there may have been some um, trauma to my to my, uh, to my hair. And I think there may have been, but not because of the astral travel. Okay, um, let's talk about, um, for those of people who don't know, what is, how do you, what is astral travel? Astral travel is is through divine meditation. You can travel anywhere in place and time. You can go to different dimensions. Uh, you can see the world through history. You can go back and and watch things as they unfold. It almost like it's almost like the ultimate cable package. You got the ability not only to watch history, but you can interact to some extent with history. That fettuccine Alfredo in Venice was delicious. Yes, it was. <laughs> Though it was good. Um, fettuccine Alfredo, of course, is not actually a Venetian dish, but it was, of course, uh, the restaurant we were at in modern Venice was serving it. So it was very delicious. Um, but the um, the point I'm trying to get at is because of the fact that you ask for travel, one of the promises is some people get so ahead of themselves that they travel and they take the whole presence with them they totally zone out they have no idea what's going on there's they you know they just about turn off the pilot light if you will they don't or they're just about dead okay um so that's obviously very serious because if you're almost just about dead that means that someone it's like it's like it's like leaving the house without locking the door. A, a, a dark entity could take that take over right there. Yeah, and you could find yourself coming home to an unwanted guest in your home who is not going to leave just because you're telling them to leave. This is one of the reasons why um, it's really better to have uh, leave a little bit of a century behind to uh, make sure that you don't um, find yourself totally... Um, out of a place to live. Like the equivalent of using your security system to uh, uh, set the alarm so that if something happens, you get a message, uh, excuse me, something's going on, you got to get back here right away. You know, so it's the same thing. So like when the doorbell rings or something like that, or the phone rings, I have to go, you know, from there to there. I mean, boom. And so there's always a piece of me that's always left over that pulls back the rest of me. It's like, in the, in, in the nice circumstances, I like to come back slowly, but if I come back too fast, it's like, it's like two, it's like a, it's like two car head on collision, bam, and it's like, cause there's like, a, there's like this huge silver cord that goes between us. It stretches really far, but it, you know, you, it does stretch. It won't break, but it'll stretch. And so, like, if you're really far away from your body, it's like just like an elastic band. All of a sudden, you lose control, and wham! You come right back, and it's like, ouch. Yeah, it's, I've seen that happen, and it's really, really dis dis discomforting. It's really, really scary. <sighs> yeah, because if you don't really um, um, understand what you what's happened, you can really be scared, you know, badly by that experience. But once you've done enough astral travels, you know enough to... Uh, that if you must come back quick and hurry, you get you prepare yourself for that impact of the return. Um, now you talk about astral travel, 
And also there's astral projection. Astral travel is pretty much just like watching a TV channel from all the channels. Astral projection is when you can actually become, project yourself into another time. That's what we did when we traveled to Venice as some Pacini Alfredo. Okay, so we actually traveled back and forth. We, we traveled to modern Venice. We had, a, we enjoyed a nice t a trip on the Grand Canal. We had a great time. But I mean, the truth is, is that is astral projection where you're projecting yourself into another time or another place but you still got a little bit of yourself here now what about by location okay by location is where you can be two places at once sherry said that you were by locating um both here in her house and here well um I am truly concerned about her well-being. I certainly wanted to make, Father Yahweh said he would make sure that she would be safe. Well, if it took, um, if, I think I did too. I think that's the reason why I probably would have done it. Because I was like, well, I'm not going to go over and send a total stranger out there to watch over her as she calms down from her fright. That's certainly not going to happen. No. Um, but um, Mother Asna can trilocate, which means she can be three places at once. Yeah. Um, we don't talk much about this other person, but let's talk about briefly about um, um, the demons. Uh, we call them demons, but I don't really think they're literally even called the demons. Demons, the demonics, you know. The demonics are, are people who never had souls or had never had bodies. They're not humans. They've never been human. They, they will probably never be humans. Right. They work with Lucifer and his group and... Uh, but they have a desire to have a soul. Remember the story about the pigs in the in the um, in the Bible when Jesus removed um, many many demons from a demoniac, and he he said, "Who are you?" He asked him. He said, "We are legion." He said, "What am I to do with you?" He said, "Cast us into a swine over there." He did, and what did they do? They took the swine and they drowned them because that's the way they are. Demons don't really uh, they're reckless. They're like they're like careless with what they even by having that body for you know for a few hours since they drowned the, the, the body the, of the swine um they're careless but they also really don't see um the beauty in mother and father asna's you know mother and, and fathers i should say you know wait let's talk about that mother god is has been known by many names yes um, she's known among many Indians as, uh, let's see, we've got this right here, uh, the Divine Mother. She's also known as, uh, in the Eastern Rite Orthodox Church, she's known as Sophia. Uh, in the Western Rite, she's known as Mary. Uh, she's known, um, as Isis. And, um, and she really is truly a beautiful person and a wonderful person. And Father God is known as by many names, including Yahweh, Osiris, um, Ra. Um, I don't know about Ra. Sun God. Sun God, Apollo, right? Um, Mistra. He's um, a very, very powerful being. He represents the... He, he personally takes care of the things that Mother chooses not to. He's more like this maintenance guy that makes sure that the equipment is working in the building, like your plumbing and your electrical and your heat. He's not always actively concerned about uh, everything on, on the personal level. Mother is more of the social one. She's, you know, is concerned about the well-being of the people of the world and, and, and her children because she sees herself as a, as a mother. Um, which makes sense. That's why we say Mother Gaia, because she also knows Gaia, the great Earth, Greek goddess of Earth. Okay, uh, the word Geo um, also is refers to Gaia, which is Gaia in Greek. Uh, so she's really very important to the understanding of uh, how much she provides for us. It sounds like we could go on for this for hours. My butt's getting sore. <laughs> I hate this chair. I know. Um, but it's already dark into the other studio. It would have been too dark to do a video in. Um, what do you think people should do to understand um, where they fit in the divine mystery of things? you got to just ask questions. you got to keep asking questions. 
And don't be afraid to knock on doors and ask, you know, questions if you were, especially if you're still young and you haven't really been too much into this dogmatic churches, then you can go start asking questions like, you know, not in a rude way, but ask honestly, it's like, Am I really getting the whole story, or am I just getting pieces of the story? In other words, am I only seeing one of the dominoes out of the box of dominoes? What happened to the other dominoes? What happened to the divine truth? I'm only getting a piece of it. Yeah. Well, okay, so obviously we've determined that the Ouija board is a tool of diminution, which, of course, Father God and Mother God don't really want us to mess with it, really, because it, depend it all depends on when the questions we're asking. Okay. If we're asking about our loved ones, you know, that's that's fine. If we're asking about if they're okay, we already know if they're on with Mother and Father Yahweh, they are fine. They are not, you know, they don't live in torment. Um, if they're truly a dark soul, and you know they're a dark soul, you know damn well where they are. And they're on, they want their love tour. They want their love tour. Okay. Uh, we talked about that in the past. I'm not going to go into that again. Okay. So... All right, well, first of all, I want to thank you very much, Michelle, for taking the time to talk to me about this. And also, I want to remind everybody, oh, did you figure out the situation with the comments? Yes, I did. Okay. After suggested videos. I'm talking about the mobile app now, not the desktop one. After all the video suggestions, scroll up on your iPhone, and you will see your comment section for that video. Instead of having a separate tab on the top of suggested videos and comments, they have put the comments at the end. So you got to go through all that crap to scroll to the bottom. And that can so, um, make things real slow for people. And um, so I definitely still suggest that you, of course, don't be free to ask for me and let me to help answer your questions. We'll do the best we can. Um, it's a lot of information. And... Um, and I know, Lumi, you and I have talked with several people in the past about spiritual divinity, um, spiritual questions. Um, what do you think is the hardest thing for some people today? Um, I think the hardest thing is that there's a lot of people in this world that are just don't know where to start asking questions or because of fear, they're not asking the questions. They want to know the answers. To it. It's almost like they're afraid the answers not, are not going to be what they want. Could be. Could be. All right, guys. So the point is, is don't forget to like, comment. Yes, you can try down there in the comment section and share our videos with other people. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Michelle's channel, and keep learning. Don't be free to ask the questions. That's what is makes us human beings beautifully wonderful people so we can ask questions. And um, I know I'm sure you also ask, you know, you're still asking questions too. Yeah, I am. I'm still learning. It's my 32nd time on earth, and trust me, I'm still learning. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, again, or is it 33rd time? I kind of lost track. It's your 33rd, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I don't know what the future is for 34 is going to be. <laughs> Nobody knows. All right, guys, so we're going to let you go, and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.